We've done it. You asked for it. We have delivered possibly the most iconic bike of all time, the Lotus, a bike so fast and so futuristic. The UCI not only banned it, it made them ban everything else as well. But they've got no jurisdiction here, so here it is. And I'm grinning like a Cheshire cat because today a childhood dream is coming true. We're actually gonna get to ride it and see just how fast it is compared to a modern bike. Let's do it! our films on the venerable Bataline, the time trial bike of 1987, and Greg LeMond's Bilato from 1991, we promised to up the stakes again and see what happens if we take another step forward in the history of TT Bikes Tech to see just how good it was, is in fact. This bike we have today technically still holds the hour record. The Lotus 110 evolved from the 108, which is the bike that Chris Boardman used to win gold in the individual pursuit in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics and set a world record in the process. Yeah, so the difference is mainly is that the 110 is, as you can see, a road-going version. And Boardman and the whole GAN team, in fact, rode them in the 1994 Tour de France, including allowing Chris to set the fastest ever prologue time trial, an average, an average of 55k an hour. Yeah, a record that still stands to this day. Now, this particular bike, once again, belongs to the legend that is Steve Grimwood of Elmy Cycles in Ipswich. So a massive thanks for Steve for letting us borrow it. And without his generosity, videos like this just wouldn't be possible. So if you want to show Steve some appreciation, Give us a thumbs up and uh, oh, well, visit his shop when, you, when you're passing through Ipswich. Like our other videos in this series, we have our vintage TT bike and modern aero superbike, the Orbea Orca Aero. Si and I will do runs on both bikes and at the end, we'll see which bike we were faster on. As ever, we've set up the bikes with our power meter pedals so that we can have power measurement on both bikes. The plan is to ride to a power that is repeatable on both runs so we can get an idea of how they compare. Size up first on the Orbea. I think Ollie might have gone to have a little bit of quality one-on-one -on -one time with the Lotus. So um, I guess I'm counting myself in there. While Sai is out on the course setting a benchmark time, let's talk Lotus. So we've actually got an excellent video on the 108 on the tech channel if you want to see that in more detail. But it feels pretty poignant and, and fitting doing a video about this bike following the recent and very sad death of bike design icon and maverick Mike Burrows. The whole concept originated from him and he was a man who dedicated much of his life to designing lighter and more aero bikes. So the main differentiation from the 110 from the 108 is that it has been designed for the road and consequently you've got a more traditional fork on there you've also got vertical dropouts instead of the horizontal track dropouts in addition you've got cables brakes and gears which are kind of useful when you're riding on the road the Orbea Orca Aero that we're comparing it to is a cutting edge road bike super aero and also decked out with the finest components you can get your hands on. We've got Shimano Durace Di2 group set. We've got Aero Shimano C50 wheels. And it is just a top of the range bike, but it differs from the Lotus in two key areas. Firstly, it is of course a road bike with drop handlebars, not a TT bike. But then secondly, this is designed to be UCI legal, so it meets all of the requirements that the Lotus falls foul of. There is, however, one glaring change to this, and that is the, well, addition under the down tube. 
So whilst this bike is UCI legal, you have to remove that bit at the bottom in order to race. What? I got no welcome party either. He really does love that, I notice. Wow. In that case, I'll tell you how that one was. Not much to report other than absolutely blooming fantastic. I mean, what can you say if you're riding around on a cutting edge aero bike? It's fast. The, the only slightly annoying thing is that for some reason, Ollie has got his DI2 buttons flipped the wrong way. So instead of feeling the benefit of shifters like that, I was flapping around like I had friction shifters on my down tube, but never mind. I don't think that made too much difference. Ollie, you ready? Yeah. This is proper exciting, isn't it? You're going to ride a it's Lotus. So cool. It's so cool. Like, it is a dream to, to, to get a chance to ride this bike. It's, it's yeah, amazing. Before, Feel... you, before you set out there, I'm going to nail my colours to the mast. Right. I don't think that is going to be quicker than the Orca Aero. Okay, like, yeah, you've got mega aero wheels on there. The frame, I reckon, is slightly more aerodynamic. But look at all of this, like, jazzle up front. Now, you know, there's I'm a not, lot of gubbins. I'm not an aero guru, right? But I know that tubes are really bad. Those are very tubular. There's all of these cables. And what is that stem? It's like an air brake there. Look, it's like a. I, anyway, good luck. I reckon, I reckon it's going to be quicker. Do you? Yeah. I do. All right. Well, if nothing else, you look as cool as a cucumber. Do I look like Boardman? Not particularly, but, you know. <laughs> I think that's, you know, you look cool. All right, right let's do it. Ready? Yeah. All clear. Beep, 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 beep. The absolutely mental thing about the Lotus 108 is it still holds, in the eyes of many, the hour record. Chris Boardman did the best human effort on it, covering 56.3 kilometers, which incredibly is still further than what Dan Bigham recently did using all of the latest aero tech. Oh, Ollie Boardman himself. Oh, that on. was amazing. Was it? Yeah. Actually? Yeah, so much fun. Like. It feel, it feel, it, I mean, it's, it's rapid, this bike. Is it? Yeah. I, I mean, like the power, bang on the money. And uh, like in terms of the same as that. So I don't know what, I didn't have the timer on. So I don't know, it's going to be close. But like power bang on and it felt rapid. Like, right, come on, get off. I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. <laughs> Let me get my helmet on. That's really sweaty. Yeah, look at <laughs> my sweaty crotch. <laughs> these um, these red Lotus pads are cool, aren't they? Like kind of faux leather embossed. With the Lotus logo. Yeah. yeah. Almost makes me feel like I'm actually like on a Lotus Lotus. Like a car. Hello. <laughs> Do you know what Lotus stands for in the car world? No. Lots of trouble, usually serious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often I set off on a bicycle ride like fizzing with excitement. Like, I know. I mean, I'm always like loving it, but genuinely like. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm was, I was, I was just raring to get going on it. Yeah, it's amazing. Right. Mm, mm, mm. Ready? Yeah. Count me in. Beep, 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 beep. And he's off. Oh. Big gear. That is a big gear. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's stiff out of the blocks. Wowzers. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. I can see my shadow in front of me. It looks arrow. 
my speed's looking good. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, I'll take it back. That feels fast. Good, isn't it? Done it, like, that feels, it just feels like it holds its speed and like you can tell there's a headwind, but it's just not slowing you down. Like it's, it's rapid and also, it sounds really stupid when you're talking about an iconic bike like this, but actually having the shifters on the ends of your skis. Yeah as opposed to those two other vintage TT bikes where it was on the down tube. Even though this is friction, God, how much better is it? Yeah. The other thing that stood out for me is with it being like a sort of, you know, a beam bike with, with no down tube, is when I came out the corners and on the turn and I'm out the saddle, it felt stiff. Yeah. I didn't feel like it was like wagging its tail. No, I Which I thought it might. Straight out of the blocks, I was like, hold up. I mean, we gotta be clear, I mean, this thing weighs a ton. Like, we didn't bring the scales of truth today, but I'm guessing this is like 10 or 11 kilos or something. It's an absolute whopper. <laughs> when you hold it, it feels like it's made of solid carbon. Yeah. It doesn't feel hollow. But like it rides it is, like it's, it's made chunky. of solid carbon as well. Yeah. It? Like, I mean, but what, you know, who needs a lightweight track bike? Boardman slash... didn't. No? No. I mean, the fact that this rear disc used to be able to add weight to it to increase the centrifugal force, like, yeah, turn it into a flywheel. I see it. They know that, you know, weight doesn't matter that much on a TT bike, right? Whew. Okay, all right, I'm going to press stop on the old Wahoo. I cannot wait to see the results. Ollie, this feels like a very important moment in cycling. We are potentially going to dethrone one of the most iconic, lusted after, fastest bikes of all time. Mm. So hit us with your results. Right. I was 13 seconds slower on this one. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about you? But to throw a spanner in the works. Yeah. I was one second slower on this one. No. Oh, so for what? me, the Lotus, I don't know, I don't know how we make sense of that. For me, the Lotus was. I mean, fractionally, within a margin of a big error, let's face it. But still, I did go quicker on that one. It's, I mean, it's so close between the two, like, without any shadow of a doubt. I, though, right, feel that I was compromised on this position. And this ergo stem thing that you say, like, is a windbreak, yep. is actually really adjustable, and I could get the front end higher. That's why like, it deserves to be on a hybrid bike. Yeah, I think if I were... I think if I were in a more optimised position on this, akin to the kind of position that I have on my normal TT bike, I'm, I'm confident I could go faster yeah. than, than on that. I suppose because I'm fractionally taller than you, mm. you've got a different body Your legs shapes. are longer than mine. So maybe actually that position is, is more optimal for me, but even so, it didn't feel good as such. Yeah. So what we're saying then is that that bike could still be more aero, but you've got to adjust it and actually both of us fit better on the road bike yeah and therefore it is more aerodynamic yeah i think the other thing as well that, that helps the, the modern aero bike is the gearing something that you take for granted now we de i definitely feel i take for granted but when you don't have that big range of gears on you know like the 1130 cassette and the small jumps between them and then the instantaneous di2 shifts on a rolling course like what we have you know, I, it's, you notice when you don't have it. it I felt over-geared and struggling to shift on, on, on the gearing on this, even though the gearing is much better than it was on the Le Monde bike because you've actually got the changing happening up on, on the friction shifters up on the, on the extensions. Yeah. So what are we going to tell the viewers then? Basically, it's still an outrageously fast bike, but it's not that much better than a modern aero road bike which is bonkers, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Question is though now, what would happen if you now went and did a lap on your Orbea or do TT bike? I'd smoke it. Really? Yeah. I'd Modern TT smoke bike it. smokes. I don't, even, I don't even have to do it. I know I'd smoke it, but I'm so dialed in and used to the position on the modern TT bike and it's, it's tricked out with all the latest tech, the tires are faster and everything, it, 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 would, it would smoke it. Okay. But I mean, I love this bike. Look at that gap there. That, look at that gap. That is, I mean, that is special, isn't it? 
it's a, it's a lovely gap. What we're saying then really now is that you need to borrow that bike from Steve for a long time to get dialed on it. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll revisit this. Steve, how do you feel about that? <laughs> We'll talk. we'll talk later. <laughs> Great stuff. Right. Well, thank you so much, Steve, genuinely, for the loan of your bike and letting us ride it, like properly ride it as well. That yeah. That's cool, isn't it? If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up to thank Steve as well. Yeah. And also mm. remember that we've got a documentary on GCM Plus where we dive into the detail and the history of that Lotus, talking to all the main protagonists. And actually, we've also got another documentary with the legend that designed it, Mike Burrows as well. So do make sure you check that out. We've got well. one with Boardman as well, the man who rode it. Make sure you subscribe to GCM <laughs> Plus because we've got the full Lotus back catalogue. <laughs> yeah.